2020, 23, what, what happened? What, what was your thing during COVID and um, how did you spend your time? Weirdly, I got really busy um, right at the start of the pandemic or out of the lockdown. I, um, I started doing a lot of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, probably like a lot of people, I invested a lot in the, to the, the home studio mm -hmm. space. And um, so I was doing a lot of like remote sessions and um, a lot of composing at home, you know, because um, recording is such a big part of my my composing process. Mm -hmm. It was uh, pretty productive for me. I'm weird, weird, nice. strange to say. <laughs> so, I mean, what what do you mean with um, recording is a is a big process of your composing? Then it's not like traditional way of composing mm -hmm. with like paper and uh, pen. Um, it's more like your ideas. It's directly to the to document them right and rather than like um you know translating them through process of notation mm -hmm. you just have mm -hmm. the ideas more immediate it also comes from a more sonic place like in terms of you can um manipulate the sound or have a better idea mm -hmm. of of the the sonic space of your your composition too all of this comes out of improvisation yeah yeah, yeah? totally yeah so when you go on stage it's the same or do you have any special idea to what to play now i mean when i saw it with the new pre there were songs and you played them, mm -hmm. but then with uh, some special parts in it, or like you do it live. Right, right. But now with the with the live recordings with your quartet now, um, this is all improvised. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one piece um, on the uh, the ETA album that uh, is composed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's composed in the in the style that the band improvises in, so it it sounds like you can't really tell, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but for the most, I mean, absolutely, we just improvise when we play. So you that. never know what happens. No, nope, never know. And that's the <laughs> is that the exciting thing about it for you as well, or and uh, going with the other musicians and trying to find out what can happen. How do you how do you choose your musicians then? Uh I mean I uh I just try and find sympathetic people, you know, who right. like maybe uh who are thinking about music in the same ways as me in terms of uh you know um Yeah, just who have some of the same ideas. I mean, I can tell, like, even if we never talk about it, you can tell just by the way that they approach music and their instrument that we're thinking about the same right, thing, right. you know. For you, this was like done, New Breed, then, the project. Oh, no. Or is it still no, going no. on? No, it's still going, yeah. I'm so working, I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on a new new breed album I see. right now. Okay. Yeah. But in between, you do you do a lot of uh, guesting as well. You're on the uh, new Michelle Diego Cello album, yeah. which mm -hmm. I really love. The album. Did Did you know um, Michelle before? Like from yeah, yeah. over the years. Yep. Yeah, I've known Michelle probably uh, almost 20 years, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, she's actually kind of responsible in a weird way for my my solo uh, guitar thing, because because I had she asked me to open for her 
playing solo in Chicago for, uh -huh. for three nights yeah. in um, maybe 2014, I think. Yeah. And uh, I had had been more just like practicing, like um, playing solo. And I was like, well, I guess I kind of can do some of this stuff I've been like working on. And so I went and it eventually, it's kind of evolved into like mm -hmm. an approach that I have to playing um, solo, like a solo set of music. Yeah, yeah. Who else are you playing with or have you played with recently? Because I see your name all over the place. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, with Gerald Clayton, I was on. Um, yeah, okay. I was here over in Europe in uh, March. Makaya McRaven, I've been right, playing right. playing with him a lot. A great tenor saxophonist in L.A. named Daniel Rotem, mm -hmm. um, playing some with him. Miguel Atwood Ferguson, uh, just. Uh, finished up an album that mm -hmm. I'm on. Speaking, I mean, if we go back in time, is, is there still tortoise going on? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we weren't really active for, uh, like during all of COVID. We played like a couple shows here and there, but we didn't really do much since 2016. Right. And we're just now starting to try and uh, begin to make a new album. What's the difference for you between all your projects? I mean, how do you... I mean, there's Tortoise, there's the solo stuff, there's the guesting, and of course there's ETA now. Yeah. What do you like most to do? My thing is I like, I really like the music to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of how I I compose. It's, um, I'm thinking about the way that the music moves, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a thing that really um, only I can do it. I mean, and, and that comes from me listening to a lot of, uh, like a lot of hip hop and like the way that uh, like a producer makes music, mm -hmm. like with mm -hmm. music that's in repetition and um, and has like these kind of static elements that move together, mm -hmm. but then um, it's kind of the way that they rub up, rub up against each other, is what makes the, mu the music feel and sound a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, and that's um, that's unique, I think, to to everyone who makes music. And when I make the music by like my music alone, I still want it to retain that feeling of how it, it sounds in my brain, mm -hmm. you know? Speaking of hip hop, what kind of artists are you listening to? Is it more the old school or JD or uh, Madlib or? Yeah, yeah, Madlib. I mean, he's Or Kendrick, like, I mean, on the other hand. Oh, you listen to all of them? <laughs> yeah, I listen to all of them. I mean, I, I'm really like a big Madlib fan. Yeah. Um, Madlib and Nandilla, JD, DJ Premier. I guess my stuff is more that uh, kind of, uh, I guess it'd be golden era, like sample based kind yeah. of music. Yeah. Like um, hip hop now, um, uh, producers don't sample as much because of of, uh, of um, copyright and mm -hmm. get afraid of, of getting sued, mm -hmm. which um, which is cool, but like a, a lot of it's not it's not so interesting to me. I like the older stuff. You told me three years ago that you were at the uh, teaching at the AACM. Are you still doing that? I mean, I'm a member of the AACM. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't, I never taught at the school. Um, and my my membership in the AACM is more like 
more by association and like mm -hmm. I've been mentored by a lot of those musicians mm -hmm. and um and I, I'm very I think my experiences in, in there um definitely inform the way that I kind of define myself as an artist and musician mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know when people think of the AACM they think of the way a, a sound that the um, kind of the iconic AACM musicians created. And I don't, I feel like my own music isn't so beholden to that mm -hmm. um, aesthetic, but in terms of uh, making a, like I definitely consider my, my myself as an artist in the in that lineage of mm -hmm. musicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a young musician? Uh, what would be your advices? I would encourage any young, any musician, young or old, to kind of uh, get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I think younger musicians should seek out more experienced musicians rather than, you know, because I mean, the music is like deep. Like, I mean, even heard us in our sound check, we we're like playing like blues and bebop yeah, tunes right, and stuff. Right. But when we play our original music, it's not like that at mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. you know. But it's something, um, I think it's important, you know. I mean, I think the tradition of, of, uh, I mean, for lack of a better word, of jazz music is very like rich. Mm -hmm. And if you only stay in a uh, small part of it, you know, I, I think, yeah, I don't, I think that young musician should find older musicians. <laughs> And older <laughs> musicians, <laughs> and older musicians should find younger young, musicians. Younger right? musicians, right? Inspiration, like. Yeah. Speak a little bit about your fellow musicians. Okay. Um, so uh, Josh Johnson plays alto saxophone. He's somebody I've known Josh since he was probably 16, mm -hmm. um, and he's 30, 34 mm -hmm. now. He's amazing, great, really a uh, brilliant young, well, not as young as he used to be, but <laughs> but still, I mean, still very young. You know, he's, he's got an incredible mind and uh, talent mm -hmm. and uh, great composer, really great player, super inspiring for me to play with him. How did you meet? He lived in Chicago after he finished at university, and that's when I met Anna. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, they were both, both went to Indiana University mm -hmm. and then both moved to Chicago. And, and then they both moved to LA. Mm -hmm. um, and That's when I started to play with Anna a lot more. Like I got, um, I got my residency at ETA, and I asked her to play in the right, residency. Right. And on drums? On drums is uh, Michael Patrick Avery, who's great. He's um, originally from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. but he uh, he lived in Chicago as well. Mm -hmm. He he lives in Philadelphia now. Right. But he's just great. He's uh, mostly, uh, most people might have heard him. He plays with Joshua Abrams in the, his group, the Natural Information Society. Right. Are you familiar with them? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's amazing as well. You just mentioned the uh, abbreviation like ETA. Maybe we should say what ETA stands for. It's Enfield Tennis 
academy, yeah. but it's not It's got nothing to do with tennis, isn't it? Yeah, no. <laughs> Why is it called? <laughs> it's, oh, it's a funny a, name for a bar. <laughs> yeah, it's a reference. It's from a book called Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. And I guess it's, um, I, I actually haven't read the book. Right. But it's, I guess it's a, it's a reference from that book. Mm -hmm. And the owner of when the um, I asked the owner, what does ETA mean? When I was looking for a, a title for the album, right? And he finally told me, "Oh, it's Enfield Tennis Academy." So, is it is it like a small ETA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a sm small, like a tavern. All right. And you do this uh, on a regular basis there, still? Uh, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, in theory. Or, or we, uh, no, it was weekly. Weekly? Yeah, every Monday. Wow. Yeah, every Monday, but... Like over a time period? Like what? Yeah, I mean, I mean we did it, uh... I mean, we started in probably 2017, I think, mm -hmm. and did it. Mm -hmm. Pretty consistently, right. like uh, for uh, up until COVID, mm -hmm. it's like well, I think it, we might have even started in 2016, mm -hmm. but we did it on, like almost every Monday for like almost four years. Seeing your your places where you where you're playing now with the touring the ETA, um, is it for you? Do you uh, prefer playing smaller places like this one as well? Uh, I'll play any place, you know. I mean, yeah, big or small, I'll yeah. play wherever there's a gig. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, for me, it's always the question like, how far is the audience away? You know, when you play small places, they're directly there, and then you maybe something happens, like, like in, uh, yeah, there's some. How do you call that? Waves going on, right? Yeah, we feed off the energy from the audience. That's what I was... Definitely, yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, I like to try and create a space for the listener with my music, you right. know? It's like I'm trying to, like... Like, really, it's a make a uh, environment. It's like not... It's, a, it's not really about what... Technically, what's happening? Right. It's much bigger than yeah, yeah, yeah. than that. I mean, I'm not thinking about oh, I'm playing, you know, but the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's more about like definitely it's like a communication. You know, yeah, we're yeah. exchange exchange of energy with the with the listener. Absolutely, you know. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about that all the time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John, for recording.